Hello and welcome to the first mini episode of the Gadget Show recorded exclusively for our website. I'll be doing one of these mini episodes every week, regardless of whether the main TV programme is on or not. And I'll be using them as an opportunity to get frustrated with bits of technology or indeed sort of sing the praises of things I particularly like, which is where I'm going to start with this thing called the Knox and I radio. Now, one of the many great things about the internet is how it's made listening to the radio a truly globalised experience. You can listen to the whole world's radio stations wherever you are. So if I was in Japan, say, I could still keep in touch with the Archers or Radio 1, so long as I had access to a computer and an internet connection. It means that I've got literally tens of thousands of radio stations to choose from. Some of them are identical to the ones you hear over the normal airwaves in the countries concerned. Some of them are exclusive to the internet. Whatever, it really has globalised radio. The only problem is, well in fact there are two problems with it, first of all actually sitting next to a computer isn't necessarily the most natural way of listening to the radio. The other thing is you've actually got to sort of seek out all those websites yourself. But that's where the iRadio comes in. It just looks essentially like a, like a normal radio, but instead of receiving those signals over the terrestrial airwaves, you actually plug in to the internet. You can do it directly via a cable through the ethernet socket, or indeed as I've got it set up here, you can sort of link it through to your wireless router, which incidentally was very easy to do. It only took a few seconds to, to get it sorted out. Switch it on and uh, through a wizard it actually finds your internet connection and is automatically downloaded through a bit of software called V Premium, which you're subscribed to when you buy the radio. Automatically finds all the radio stations, or at least tens of thousands of radio stations around the world, and organise them. You can actually do it by type of music, by genre, by countries, which I think is particularly fascinating. You'll find virtually every country and continent is represented. I can go to Africa, I can go to Angola, there's Radio Angola, it's connecting, and you're instantly connected to whatever people are listening to in the heart of Africa. It's quite exciting, really, and I don't expect the sound quality to be that brilliant. I've got 24 kilobits a second. Ooh. Um, and so it's more like listening down the telephone, actually. That gives you the sort of strength of your Wi-Fi connection. This symbol here is a, a measure of the, um, how full the buffer is, which it uses to sort out sort of inconsistencies in the internet signal. Let's try Radio 107.5 Costa Rica. I've had one of these at home. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. I think it's brilliant. I mean, it also does podcasts, by the way. So um, I, I did briefly try a, a Mandarin lesson from Beijing. Actually, I found it particularly interesting uh, listening to different French accents around the world, uh, Canadian ones, very different from the Belgian, for example, I've discovered. Um, I think it's an absolutely fantastic thing, and not mainly because it's almost a foretaste of what radio is going to be in the future, I think, when we have blanket Wi-Fi coverage and we can actually listen to the world's radio in our cars. There are a few things I'd probably do a bit better. I'd love to have a rechargeable battery in it so I could carry it around the house. I'd like it to have FM and DAB reception as well for when I wanted to listen to things in better quality, but overall I think it's a fantastic development and I give it four Gs. Right, well that's the end of the first mini-episode of The Gadget Show online. I rather enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I'll be back for another one next week. Bye-bye.